Good morning, it's Jonathan Barrett with the Morning Debrief. It's uh, 7.46 and it's the 29th uh, of October, last trading day uh, for October. So I think October went very quickly. I don't know how many times I say that every time we do a morning brief, another month goes past. Anyway, <laughs> let's see how we go. Uh, um, let's just have a quick look at uh, a little bit of a recap of last night. Uh, we did have um, uh, Microsoft had to report some of its uh, profits last night and uh, that in itself was uh, relatively positive and uh, actually ho also helped to hold up the mark a little bit. So uh, that in itself was uh, was quite good indeed. Um, okay, so let's um, let's run through. The Dow had, I think, had a relatively mixed night last night. And um, I think if it really wasn't for Microsoft, uh, probably would have come under a little bit of pressure. She did close down about 11 points, actually 12 points. So let's just have a look at it here. Yeah, the Dow was down uh, 12 points at 11,114. Uh, the S&P was up 1.33 and the Nasdaq was up 4.11. Uh, the Europe, the top 50 was up 16, FTSE was up 31, the CAC was up 19, the DAX was up 27. The local market closed uh, down a fraction, down 6, 4,676 on SICOM and that had a high of 4,701. Obviously it seems uh, quite elusive that uh, 4,720, um, so we're going to have to be quite focused uh, on when we can actually get through that level, uh, when, because it's uh, certainly tracking a lot of frustration in the market is to try to work out exactly uh, when it's going to break through that. It might happen on the back of the stimulus that we're expecting, particularly out of the Fed. And the market is really focused on this as, uh, as, as part of uh, the, the next big bout. And as a result of that uh, focus, I think the US dollar also came under pressure last night and gold is up a little bit. But uh, the market is angling for it. I have mentioned whilst the market is angling for it, it's going to be hard to find a trend. And also whilst the perception is that the stimulus will create more dollars and the dollar should weaken. Um, that should be the bias at the moment. Uh, we are a little against that because we feel that the stimulus in itself, the first one, hasn't really worked um, to the desired effect of what the market wants. And uh, obviously the second one, um, I'm a bit dubious. So I think we have to do something different there. But anyway, let's have a look at uh, some of the markets. And uh, as we normally do, let's have a look first of all at the, uh, at the dollar index. Uh, dollar index came back here. Uh, market expectation here is obviously, uh, you can see here that stimulus, stimulus package wanting to go through, uh, our optimism towards it, and then um, there was a bit of a low there, and uh, up she went, or up the, uh, down the dollar went, sorry. So I uh, find a little bit of support there, but I think whilst we've got that out in the market, uh, whilst we've got that talk in the market that uh, uh, there is a concern, let's just move that over there, uh, that um, I feel that uh, the market will be quite happy uh, to actually, um, Remain soft, I think, if anything, um, or soft towards the, the easing. And as a result of that, the dollar should remain a little bit under pressure. Okay, um, looking at um, just a couple of them, the main ones which we do look at. Um, we had uh, oil infantries last night. Let's have a look at oil now, 81.91. Even on the back of um, the data we had last night, where um, basically uh, we had a, a, a build again. Uh, crude infantries actually rose 5 million barrels, far above the expectations. This is all, all part of it. The crude stockpiles gained 1.4% and um, they're up 7.8% uh, from a year ago. Uh, so gasoline stockpiles were down a little bit. But uh, I think the, the, the key here is that it's not doing anything. Um, you yeah, know, this stimulus isn't working towards, the, towards uh, what's happening and it really needs to try and break out of this, this big consolidation pattern. And that's pretty much what it is. It's just consolidating. And uh, look, I'm not quite sure how long this will last for, but we certainly have um, the weaker dollar actually holding crude prices higher. And I think to me that's more of a concern because that's more of a false economy. And But uh, let's see how we go. We have got a small short on crude oil. And, um, and I think the fundamentals of mine still reiterate what I actually feel there concerning that. Uh, copper, 378, just in a range, obviously benefit from the US dollar. Uh, weakness there and back up to the top end of the range. 388 is the top side. Uh, remember you do have that infantry draws there, still remains a concern. Um, but as you can see here, we tried to get up there, so I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, just a little bit of pressure on the downside for copper over the next couple of days. Gold benefited well from the dollar. It's a direct correlation to dollars now. Uh, nothing more. We had a good lift there. Expectations are that we now have a, um, if you feel that you're up to it, um, a break of 13 uh, 20 and 1355, the key areas we're going to keep an eye on. As a result of gold going up, Aussie bounced well, 97.86. There you can see it doesn't look too strong, uh, but let's see how it unfolds. Our expectations for me are for it to come back a little bit more. 
Um, so let's see, dollar yen is another one which has been patiently just trading at 81.06. Um, every time we get that lift, like here and here, uh, the pressure comes back on, and that's what we're seeing again. So I think it's just a wait and see there. Uh, just have a look at some of the softs here, and this is interesting. Wheat, uh, 7.19, um, and also soybeans. Have a good look at them today as well, uh, because when you look at what's happening in the wheat market, it's quite strong over the last couple of days. And I think expectations for here are for it to continue to remain relatively strong. So quite happy about that there. Uh, soybeans, 12.22. Um, and uh, with what's happening there in China in terms of imports, I actually feel that China has a concern on these sorts of things and uh, will be on any dip. Uh, interesting here that we broke to new highs and came back. Keep an eye on that one there um, because I actually like that on that break to the top side. Okay, local market, what's going to happen there uh, today? Um, probably opened up relatively flat uh, in terms of what the market wants to do. Um, but as you can see here, we've been tracking that time, 4,675 for some time. 4,720 is elusive on the top side. I really need to see a breakthrough there to see what happens. And uh, as you can see, very strong market here. Uh, let's see, traditionally we get a bit of a sell-off on Friday. Uh, but um, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. But as you can see, very tough resistance uh, on the top side there. In terms of economic numbers, and uh, I guess the main stuff we've got in, we've got uh, GDP in America, personal consumption GDP index. Uh, GDP quarter on quarter is going to be important. Uh, we are, the market is expecting the bullish number. I don't, can't really see how they can get it, but let's see what happens. University of Michigan confidence number. All these numbers are upbeat. Uh, there's not one real negative one amongst them. Um, and that, to me, it does rise a little bit of concern. Um, obviously, um, University of Michigan number meant to be a little bit stronger. Purchasing managers may be off a little bit, but when you look at all the other numbers here, particularly GDP, uh, they're all meant to be perfect. They're all meant to be a little bit higher. So slightly concerned there. Um, but let's see how that unfolds. Um, apart from that, um, most important ones there, uh, Japan. Vehicle production, housing starts very important. Private sector growth in Australia. Um, so there's some which will be widely watched as well. Uh, M4 out of the UK. The UK obviously um, uh, they look at that number quite uh, quite significantly um, because it's always up there. Um, but let's see how that unfolds. Okay, well that's about it for me. I hope everyone has a great day. And um, yeah, we've got a theme which we're going to watch. We're going to see how that unfolds. And um, we'll talk to you uh, probably uh, later. And uh, have a good week. And uh, have a good uh, weekend. And, um, and good luck and happy trading.